Doing a group level analysis is similar to what you have done for fMRI data with one important difference. Since there is no time series for anatomical data, there is no need to specify conditions and onset times, and therefore no need to do a first level analysis. We can therefore go directly to a group level analysis in which we can compare groups, examine correlations between individual difference measures and cortical volumetrics, or run a longitudinal analysis. For this tutorial, we will be simply comparing two groups and seeing whether there are any significant differences between them. Before we begin, let's talk about total intracranial volume, or TIV. During segmentation and pre-processing, TIV was calculated for each subject, representing the overall volume in cubic millimeters of the space within the skull. Since this can be a plausible confound when examining differences in cortical volume between groups, we will use this as a nuisance covariate in our analysis. To extract these measurements into a single text file, from the CAT12 GUI, click on Get TIV. Double click on XML files, and note that the filter is already set to detect .xml files. Click on Recursive, and it should populate the lower window with 12 files, one for each subject. Click Done, and then click the green Go button. This only takes a second, and you can see whether it finished by going to the MATLAB terminal. You should see a new file called tiv.txt. For example, open it with the command open tiv.txt and look at the values. These will be in the same order as the XML files were loaded, which, if all the other steps have used the filter field and recursive command when selecting files, should be the same as when we load them during group level analysis. You have two options for setting up a group level analysis. You can either click on the button Basic Models in the CAT12 GUI, or you can click on Specify Second Level in the SPM GUI. Both are basically the same. The only difference is that the CAT12 GUI uses a factorial design as the default. These can be modified to do the same thing as a two sample t test in the SPM GUI, for example you just have to specify the appropriate factors and levels. For this tutorial, we will use CAT12's Basic Models button. Before we do that, however, use the MATLAB terminal to navigate to the CAT12 tutorial directory and then type mkdir second level adcn. Then click on Basic Models and double click Directory, selecting this new directory you just created. Click Done. Under Factors, change the name to Group and set the number of levels to 2. Leave the independence and variance as the defaults. Click on Cells and then New Cell. For the first cell, click on Levels and enter 1. Double click on Scans, navigate to the AD directory, and in the filter field, type SMWP1 to select the smooth gray matter maps for the AD subjects and click the Rec button. Click Done. Now do the same for the next cell, entering a level of 2, and then for the scans, navigating to the CN directory, entering SMWP1 in the filter field and clicking the Rec button, and then Done. In the Covariates field, if we scroll down, select New Covariate and double click on Name. Let's call the covariate TIV for Total Intracranial Volume. Then double click on Vector and copy and paste the values from the tiv.txt file you generated. Leave the rest of the defaults as they are. When you are done, you should see something like this. When using the CAT12 basic models, by default there is another module in the list called Check Design Orthogonality 
and homogeneity. This will load the design file you generated in the previous step and check whether there are high correlations between your covariates and any of the other regressors in your model. Leave these defaults as they are. You can also save time by adding two additional modules, one to estimate the model and one to generate the contrasts. In the menu at the top of the batch editor, click SPM Stats Model Estimation to add this module to the list. Then click on SPM Stats Contrast Manager. Click on the new Model Estimation module, highlight the Select SPM.MAD field, and then click on Dependency in the lower right corner of the batch editor window. Select the SPM.MAD file dependency from the Factorial Design Specification module. Similarly, click on the Contrast Manager module, highlight the Select SPM.MAD field, and click the Dependency button, selecting the SPM.MAD file from the Model Estimation step. Then click on Contrast Sessions and create two new T-contrasts. Since the AD group is the first regressor in our model and the CN group is the second regressor, the first contrast weight in our vector will correspond to the Alzheimer's group, and the second weight will correspond to the control group. For the first T contrast, therefore, change the name to AD minus CN and the weights vector to 1, negative 1. Likewise, for the second T contrast, change the name to CN minus AD and give it a contrast vector of negative 1, positive 1. When you are done, the module list and the contrast manager should look like this. Now click the green Go button and you should see the following graphs. This will generate a few pop-up windows, one of them showing the box plots and the correlation plots that we saw in the previous video. For now, we're going to focus on the design orthogonality window, which shows your design matrix on the top half and correlations between the regressors on the bottom half. The boxes highlighted in red represent the correlation between your covariates, in this case TIV, and the other regressors in your model. Left click on them to see how large the correlation is. In this case, it's about 0.11, which is relatively small, and we can go ahead with our analysis as usual. Now that we have estimated the model and generated the contrasts, we can look at the results just like we would the results from an fMRI experiment. From the SPM12 GUI, click on Results and select the SPM.MAD file in the directory second level ADCN. When the Contrast Manager appears, select the contrast CN-AD and click Done. From the Viewing Options, select the following. Apply Masking, None. P-Value Adjustment to Control, None. And then a value of 0.01 and an Extent Threshold of 50. These numbers are arbitrary, selected in part because we only have six subjects per group and therefore relatively low power. You can see that none of the results pass correction. However, we still see some results that may indicate trends. Click on the Overlays drop-down menu in the Display window, and then click Sections. Navigate to your SPM12 canonical directory, which for me is in my home directory, and then select a template such as single subject t1.nii and click done. Use the crosshairs in the viewing pane to click and scroll around the image, looking at where there is significantly larger gray matter volume for the CN group compared to the AD group. Although we haven't found any statistically significant differences yet, it is reasonable to assume that if we increased our sample size by a factor of 10 or 100, we would find significant differences. And that is what we will be doing when we begin analyzing a much larger sample on the supercomputing cluster, which we will cover in the next video.